Peace everyone, Unmaskard here, and welcome to another Art Club project. This pastel piece here is another of many projects you'll find on my new website. By signing up as a member, you will get the full real-time version of this and all of the other projects. Also, I stream the new projects four times a week, so there is a tremendous amount of content over there. Also, if you sign up for a year, you get two months for free. But anyways, enough with the sales pitch. Let's talk about this project, shall we? This was a request from a club member that had actually asked if I could paint a squirrel or a chipmunk. And instead, I just did both because I love both squirrels and chipmunks. They're super adorable. Working through this project, we had to give these two little critters a name, so the squirrel is Butters, and the chipmunk's name is Toast. Now this project started out like many of my pastel projects, a white sheet of 30 by 40 centimeter pastel mat, and after transferring the line art, by the way, you get the line art too with all of the projects in the art club. So after I have the line art, I cut out the masking film to cover it and start the background. For the background, I go for more of an abstract, grassy effect. It's kind of an out-of-focus backdrop to make the critters up front stand out more. I used a few shades of green and peach color alongside white and black. I didn't overblend it, so some of the texture remains and the colors don't get all muddy. I often get asked how to avoid getting the colors all gross and muddy. And what I've gathered from those having this problem is that they are pushing way too hard with the blending knife. That little blue blender you see me blending with is a pan pastel soft tool. And even though I mention that tool every video, I always end up getting asked what that tool is. So I will have a link in the description for that thing I am using to blend. Okay, what was I talking about? Oh, right, the problem of overblending your colors. The thing everyone seems to do is they press way too hard on their paper when blending. When you see me using that soft tool, I am barely touching the paper. When you're blending, you're not trying to spread cold butter on soft bread. There's no reason to apply aggressive pressure to it. Those little sponge tips should last you a very long time. So if yours are being ground away and ripped to shreds, you're pushing way too hard. I've been using the same sponges for two years now, so you gotta calm down on those poor little things. A moment of silence for all the sponges you have destroyed. All right, so the next part I work on is the log our good friends Butters and Toast are perched upon. Doing complex texture is often a very overwhelming task in any project, so it's a good thing all these projects are in real time over in the art club. That way you can sign up and listen to me explain it all again. Really though, it just comes down to just a few steps when approaching complex textures. The best way to do it is to isolate the texture from the colors. So here, in this case, I start with black to lay out the dark values that create a majority of the texture in the log. After that, I lay down a single color base layer. Sometimes you may have more than a single color for the base layer, but I recommend using as few as possible. Also, by the way, I am using Carbothello pastel pencils for the rest of this project. And if you are curious as to how I get such amazingly sharp pastel pencils, it's magic. 100% pure, organic, grass-fed, free-range, gluten-free magic. After I have the main texture applied and some base colors, I just use a few other colors to build up more texture and contrast. I really just use the same colors over and over to do this, and much like the soft tool for blending, I never put much pressure on my pencils. The other thing I mention a lot in the live streams is the importance of the direction you apply your colors. I stress this importance of applying in the direction of the textures. Over many layers that you 
must apply to cover the paper, this really helps build the subtle details within the object itself. So keep in mind when facing a complex textured subject, the first step is lay out the texture, often with the darkest value. Step two is to apply the base colors. Step two will be the longest step. Then step three is to add the details of the texture. You can see this happening on the log after everything is covered. I come back with a light gray to bring out the brightest highlights and use black to add another layer of texture of detail on top of everything. After the log, I start on Butters the Squirrel. Now, I want to preface this section with saying my approach to each animal will not be the same. The way I start here is to use black and just fill in all of the dark shapes. Sometimes this is a solid way to start, but not every time. So after I block in some of the darker areas, I block in the underbelly and then focus on the head. The way I like to start furry animals is to map out all the fur direction. Butters here was a nice challenge. He has a lot of complex intersections within the fur that requires a lot of precision to make the anatomy look correct. When mapping out the fur texture, I just use a light color I intend on using in the fur in general and essentially sketch out a vector field, the features of which describe both direction and length of the fur. The most difficult part really is accurately mapping out the fur because once you have that part done, you just apply the appropriate colors in the direction till you have the paper covered. As long as you're never using too much pressure with your pastel pencils, you can layer infinitely till you get the result you want. Now you can use the soft tool for blending in between layers of your pencils, but here I tend to use a blending stump. Nothing fancy, just one of those tightly rolled up things you may have used with graphite. I gently blend using these to smooth out the grainy texture that pencils tend to leave behind. Now, one other thing I was to mention here before moving on to toast is the toning stage. When you look at the fur or hair or, well, really anything ever, okay, when you have your eyes open and you are seeing stuff, you will see vibrant colors. In this case, Butters has some really rich reds and orange shining in his fur, and it can be tricky getting that fur to look this way if you try to get it to look that way during the beginning. Instead, I recommend not doing that. Use only the less saturated base colors for the initial part of the fur and leave the vibrant stuff out. Then, once you have a really good looking foundation, start adding in the really bright colors. If you watch closely, you'll see that as I fill in the fur, it's more of the dull red brick color. And then after it is covered, you'll see a couple very bright colors pop in and add that vibrancy on top. I call this the toning stage. I do it this way and teach it this way because it is much easier to work with four or five colors to color something in than it is to work with nine, 10, or 11 colors. You wouldn't think that you know four or five extra colors would be that much more difficult, but in reality, it can get pretty complex if you have that many colors. The fewer the options in the beginning, the easier it is to focus on the important things like texture and contrast. Now on Toast, the chipmunk, he was quite small, so he didn't actually take that long to finish. I also wanted the two to match, so I used all of the same exact colors and went about it all in the same way too. Of course, you'd know that if you signed up for the art club and watched this project live, because all of the projects are done live. Anyways, the rest of the project gets the full polishing stage treatment. My favorite part of any project, I just go through all of the details and touch up a few things. I make some major adjustments to the shadows on the log to make butters and toast feel more attached to it. And that is pretty much all there is. I hope you enjoyed watching this project come to life. Hopefully you learned something from it too. 
please give it a thumbs up and a share. Leave a comment below, you know, all that fun stuff that helps feed the algorithm monster. And for real, if you find yourself wanting to learn more, my art club is the place to go. I really enjoy streaming the lessons and getting to know all of you, answer your questions, and create together. I do this because I genuinely love teaching, and I like to think that comes across in my tutorials. So I hope to see you all there. Until then, take care. Peace.